All right, hello there. Welcome to another wee bit different video. Today's video, well, honestly, first of all, let me get to what's most important. You guys are probably like, yo, what is up with his hair today? It's 10.44 in, it's 10.44 at night. I figured I don't want to do too much. Like, I know I'm going to have to record tomorrow, but I'm not trying to record all the videos tomorrow. So I thought, hey, I should probably record this fantasy football video ahead of time. Anyway, hence the bed head. I I was in bed before this. <laughs> Getting back to what matters. Um, week 14 rankings, running backs and receivers. That's why you clicked on this video. If you're new to this video, uh, quick heads up. Here's how we do these things. So I'm not going to rank the top 20 running backs and receivers. You guys already know or most people already know that you're going to start your studs and the Justin Jefferson's of the world, the way that Josh Jacob has been playing lately, you know, Austin Eckler, you're all starting those guys. You're not benching them no matter what I say. So I'm not going to waste my time and try to say, Hey, start and bench them. No, you're starting the top 20. So unless you have a God squad or a daily fantasy, um, kind of goal, uh, it's going to be 21 through 30. Sorry. It's going to be 21 through, uh, 40 for running backs. 21 through 50 for wide receivers but just to make sure we got all y'all covered i will be saying my favorite three plays from running backs 1 through 10 11 through 20 21 through 30 and 31 through 40 and then also for receivers but also extended from 41 through 50 so yeah let's just get right into it hopefully y'all been doing good in fantasy hopefully my advice hasn't been hurting y'all i know i said start jeff wilson last week but let me just say that i have it on video I predicted the Giants and Washington Commanders being a 20 to 17 kind of game. It was a 2020 game, so I wasn't right, but it was a hell of a prediction. Antonio Gibson against New York Giants. I'm going to bench. It's going to be a close match, and I expect Brian Robinson to probably get a lot more work on the ground. But in terms of Antonio Gibson doing what he's got to do as a change of pace back, I see it being a lot harder because I don't see their offense rolling. I think it'll be like, oh, Mm, probably somewhat of like a 17 to 20 type of game. And I just don't think Antonio Gibson is really going to shine in that environment. I also said start AJ Brown. He's going to feast. He feasted. Um, yeah. Anyway, let, let's get enough with about the bragging again. Again, with the bragging comes, you know, my faults. I did say start Jeff Wilson. I fumbled the bag on that one. But uh, I ain't always going to be right. I know he's going to be wrong. So let's just get right into it here. So ranked at 21, Don to Foreman against Seattle. I'm not at all interested in anyone in Carolina's offense unless you're maybe, and at big maybe here, maybe DJ Moore uh, as a flex play. Uh, but I'm not, again, I'm just, I'd rather not start Don to Foreman if you have to. I get it. Um, he's pretty okay, um, low in flex. I'm just not, I don't know, it, the Panthers offense is just rough. Latavius Murray, stay away from, especially against KC. KC's defense isn't particularly um, elite or good, but Denver's O is god awful. There's no, there's not a whole lot of touchdown upside either. Leonard Fournette against San Francisco. I'd say it's an okay start. I'm leaning more towards the bench just because um, Tampa Bay's offense looks horrible. They just don't look like themselves. Um, really, they've only been able to do stuff cons on a consistent basis on a two minute drill. So that should kind of say how that's going. Le Jeff Wilson against Chargers. I want to say this is the Jeff Wilson uh, redemption game. I think he's going to do a lot better, play a lot better, mostly because I feel like the game flow will be a lot more respectable. I think the Dolphins will be up early and kind of have to run the ball, try to kill some clock because the more they give it to Justin Herbert, that's something they don't want to do. Also, um, Tua had an off game, so there were passes he should have made and stuff that should have happened that that offense could have been rolling and they could have been up a lot earlier. I know that they had that Trent Sherfield touchdown right away, but after that, things kind of just steamrolled downwards. So Jeff Wilson really didn't have an opportunity to get going. I would say he's definitely going to be 13 to, 15, 13 to 16 points in PPR is what I, I would say. Cam Akers... I mean, I just would say bench flat out. What What is there to say about the Rams offense? Just not good. Just not good. 
Raheem Mostert, I would say a lower end uh, flex gets less touches than Jeff Wilson. He actually, I believe he did play better than Jeff Wilson um, this past Sunday. But even then, I just don't think that's going to be happening consistently. I know um, Mike McDaniel said say, he'll feed the hot hand um, in previous weeks. So I think that the hot, I just believe that hot hand will be Jeff Wilson. Rashad White, I would say, again, in the low and flex, with Leonard Fournette being in that backfield, it definitely does make things more complicated, especially more than you'd like. But with the way he's been playing in the past, what, three, four games? Or is it five? Just cons consistent low but respectable numbers. Not, I wouldn't say low. I would say consistent respectable numbers. So Rashad White, I would say a decent flex play. James Cook against the New York Jets uh, defense. It's going to be interesting to see how New York Jets defense uh, handles the Buffalo Bills. Again, uh, if you haven't been following the Jets, their offense has taken a turn for the better, leaving Zach Wilson behind, turned to Mike White. They obviously didn't win against Minnesota, but they just look way better. Garrett Wilson has been revived. Uh, you can look at the running backs and be like, damn, it's not just them um, doing it. It's the team because before it was Brees Hall or nothing. Now you get in this, this I believe his name is Donovan White. That's, yeah, we can find out. It starts with a Z or something. Yeah, Zonovan White. You get Zonovan White in the picture, and it's like, he doesn't look too phenomenal, but it's like people have to respect their ground game more because they're doing more in the air, and Mike White can actually find receivers. You know, it's been mainly Garrett Wilson. Mike White's first game found Elijah, Elijah Moore for a deep, deep ball and then a touchdown. I'd assume Corey Davis is going to get some uh, more looks. But, yeah, honestly, James Cook against... A more surging Jets offense. I would say I, again. I know it took me a while to get to where I'm at, but I think that's important because that's going to decide game strip, game script. Uh, James Cook. I would say. Hmm. I'm assuming the Bills will probably get more often than not. So I'd say James Cook is a decent play. I'm looking more towards 12 to 13 points in PPR, which is a solid, solid running back to number if i'm being honest you just don't want your running backs to screw you over with the way the running running back landscape is but yeah basically cream hunt i would say i would say bench i would say bench and now I, I wouldn't be too confident even if you thought deshaun watson was going to pick up his play to elevate that offense i just don't see it uh jarek mckinnon against Denver's D. I feel like they're I feel like this is an Isaiah Pacheco kind of game because they're just gonna be up and they can run the ball. Uh, I would stay away from Jarek McKinnon. I don't see where they're gonna be heavy pass um situations. Considering though that Denver's D is good, I could see why you think okay maybe uh they'll hold off the run game, but you could say the same that they'll hold off the pass game. Granted they do have Patrick Mahomes. Kansas City has Patrick Mahomes so you could again counter that with oh but it's Patrick Mahomes. Which regardless, either way is respectable. Personally, I'm going to go ahead and say sit Jerk McKinnon. Devin Singletary. I said it um, last week that I would say more more so bench because I didn't think he was going to get the uh, get the run game going. Um, he, he ended up having 50 yards. I know that it wasn't a lot, but in towards the end of the game, he actually added some yardage and then he added a touchdown. So for anyone that started Devin Singletary, good job. I think James Cook just flat, flat out looks more explosive and the Bills have been creeping that way a bit by bit more and more each game. I'm no longer comfortable starting Devin Singletary and against the Jets D, uh, I, I just wouldn't want to play Devin Singletary period. If, if you have to start him, I don't think it's the end of the world, but I wouldn't expect too much this week. Samaj P. Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and sit against Cleveland's D. I think the Bengals are solid in what they're doing. Obviously, if Joe Mixon, you know, something happens to him or whatever, Peon becomes a lot more startable. But with that being said, it's just... Bengals offense can be very infuriating. They played a lot better, obviously, with Jamar Chase on the field. Uh, just looked a lot more consistent and fluid. But I wouldn't put a whole lot of bang for your buck on Samaj Piran. Gus Edwards, I'm going to go ahead and sit. Just... Without Lamar Jackson, you you there's nothing to go 
there's just nothing you can say, nothing you can want from anyone on Baltimore, and I mean anyone. Uh, I don't, I don't see anyone producing any sort of respectable numbers. So Baltimore definitely you got to stay away from, especially against Pittsburgh D in a divisional matchup where it's going to be rough and ruthless. I'm going to call it good. Uh, DJ Dallas sit, Kenneth Walker I get, but just, no, I'm not starting DJ Dallas. Chuba Hubbard, same thing, not starting him. And then Ty Johnson gets no luck. Yeah, like all these guys are just... If you're like in some sort of touchdown dependent league, Kenneth Gainwell might snag a touchdown. But yeah, all these guys just know. Part of the video though, where we rank our favorite from 1 through 10, 11 to 20, and so on and so forth. So our favorite three plays from 1 through 10 this week are going to be... Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, I see getting a lot of catches from the backfield. Hmm... Oof, that's okay. So we're gonna go Derrick Henry, Ramondre Stevenson. Oof. This, uh, honestly, okay. I'm gonna say Derrick Henry, DeAndre Swift, and Ramondre Stevenson. Again, Ramondre Stevenson. I just see getting a lot of catches at the backfield. Solid for half PPR, PPR plus Arizona. I just think their seasons at this point more so on the lost end of things and I, I don't think they're just playing with with all that they have uh Derek Henry in a divisional matchup where they just fired the GM clearly they're 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 amped up fired up obviously he's not like a head coach so it's not someone that they're dealing with but they know they have something to prove having to go out there and show the world that they're unfazed by the outside noise and I like you can't tell me that it's not extra motivation for them to go out there and be like hey we're still going to do our thing no matter what, especially since Mike Vrabel is their head coach. Always, always going to have their all in a division of matchup with the Jaguars, even though they're, what, 7-5 and five leaving their division. Yeah, Titans, they're going to come out pretty hard. I expect them to run the ball with Derrick Henry. And then DeAndre Swift because his usage has been going up and up as the weeks go. Last week, finally got some solid usage. Expect catches out of the backfield. Expect... You know, running back screens or plays from the running back for, for him out of the backfield, catching the ball and getting him in open space. Uh, moving it down to 11 through 20, I'm going to say Isaiah Pacheco. Um, I'm not a fan of Travis Etienne against Tennessee, uh, Tennessee elite defense. This one's a lot more tough for sure. Okay, so we're gonna say Isaiah Pacheco, Ezekiel Elliott, and I guess I gotta say Joe Mixon. Uh, I'm not really a fan too much of 11 through 20. There's a lot of names where I'm a little more shaky on, like Miles Sanders against New York Giants. I just fear that they're gonna air it out and not gonna have to rely on the ground game too much if you're lucky though that you can snag a touchdown just like you did last week the game was over miles sanders got one um so hey maybe that'll happen again this week or maybe you just flat out balls balls out um zeke elliott uh you can actually i feel like you can just lock it in that he's gonna get a touchdown the way the cowboys online looks the way the cowboys offense looks in general just very very demanding when it comes to getting the groundwork going like they expect nothing less they want nothing less other than to get Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard the ball at a pretty solid rate so yeah Ezekiel Elliott I would say start for sure and then Zay Pacheco because I just think that they're gonna get the ground game um, at a more solid level since they're gonna be up against Denver Denver's oh is horrible their defense is elite but Patrick Mahomes is enough to put fear in your heart in terms of the passing attack. So I think Denver's going to have to be more lenient with the running game. Hence, Isaiah Bacheco getting involved. 21 through 30, we're, we're going to do Jeff Wilson, James Cook. Um, I don't like, yeah, this is sketchy as hell, man. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, I, you know, if I, I guess if I had to pick gun in my head, I would say Rashad White just because he's been consistent with it. Uh, so Rashad White, Jeff Wilson, 
and James Cook for the reasons I described earlier. Uh, again, James Cook is the more explosive back as opposed to Devin Singletary. He just looks better. Uh, 31 through 40, we're going to rock with only one name, and that's going to be... <laughs> okay, I. this is horrible. If, you, if I had a pick, I... Singletary out of obligation because the rest of these names are that bad. Uh, yeah, moving on to right receivers. Running backs again. It, it quickly goes out into a wasteland. Moving on to right receivers, just jumping straight into it. Waste no time here. Debo Samuel against Tampa Bay. I did not trust in the rookie Purdy. Um, not something I want to heavily get involved with from a San Francisco owner of a skill position. The only person that I have to start really is George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey. Uh, in terms of Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, if you can bench him, great. The only reason why I bring up George Kittle is because a lot of quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks, look towards tight ends all the time. Safety blankets, so George Kittle could get some receptions going. And then CMC, Christian McCaffrey, because he is always a safety blanket. Check it down, check it down, check it down. Also, Kyle Shanahan will drop plays for him. So Christian McCaffrey is solid no matter what especially in a Kyle Shanahan-led um, offense. And what I mean by that, I mean, yeah, he's the mastermind, let's be honest. Uh, keep it going. Uh, Mike Evans. Is this is this a game where Mike Evans can have like two or three touchdowns? I feel like every season he does something crazy, but I, have we had a Mike Evans crazy game? I don't think so. Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sold on that idea. With, with the way Tampa's been playing, Mike Evans is an okay start decent flex hopefully you know one of these games he blows up for like multiple touchdowns because we're uh, let's be honest i'm pretty sure anyone as a mike evans holder for anyone i'm sure y'all been waiting for that hollywood bound marquise brown against new england d i'd probably be i would probably send low and, low and flex play i just think the talent is way too undeniable for to bench to bench someone like him and the stuff that he can do especially as much of a speedy receiver as he is it just takes one big play also considering that new england does a great job at limiting x-factor players obviously that didn't happen with justin jefferson but I, you have to believe that they're going to be keen on stopping d hop so maybe that'll create more for hollywood brown i would say hollywood's a pretty okay flex play joshua palmer i would slam that start button 100% of the way. Miami's probably going to be up. Chargers are going to have to throw the ball. Joshua Palmer is going to have to be involved. Start Joshua Palmer. 100%. Jerry Judy. I would say is okay flex. I mean, if you really think about it, you're probably going to want to stay away from anyone in Denver's offense. But, I mean, Russell Wilson has to throw it to someone. So, I mean, Jerry Judy. Pretty solid. I would say it's a solid flex play. Adam Thielen against Detroit. That might be a pretty solid game to start, Adam Thielen. Detroit's defense has been better in the past weeks. Uh, but you could probably expect this game to be somewhat like 24-28, 24-27 kind of game. I would, I would, I'm leaning more towards like 24-28. There's going to be touchdowns to be had for both teams. Could be a decent, decent game to start, Thielen. I'm looking more like at 11 points PPR, which is not bad. Juju Smith-Schuster, I'm going to bench just because Denver's D, really solid. I don't think they're going to give up a whole lot of air. Again, Patrick Mahomes can do whatever he wants. Like it, It's really hard to imagine that he'll get stopped, but I think they'll be up early, run the ball, because it'll be harder to throw the ball considering, again, Denver's defense is elite. Going next, we got Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to bench. Until you see, I mean, it's a wait and see with Purdy. Obviously, if you have Ayuk, though, you've been used to starter starting uh, caliber numbers. So I understand if you have to start him. But if you have the option to bench him, I definitely would for someone like, uh, let's see. <sighs> Honestly, I think I'd rather start DJ Chark instead of Brandon Ayuk. And I'm not, I'm not even lying. Like I'm, I'm being genuine. I think I'd rather start DJ DJ Chark, Donovan Peoples Jones, uh, Michael Gallup, maybe. Arguably George Pickens or Deontay like I, I I just would not play with that fire I think the only way Brandon Ake really provides any any numbers is is the touchdown. It's a touchdown or bust I just don't see it happening any other way 
Gabe Davis against the Jets. Sauce will be on uh, Stefan. That'd make for a great, great matchup. Uh, decent, decent flex play, Gabe Davis. Not too, not too shabby. Jacoby Myers, low end flex. Just hasn't been able to do too much. New England's O isn't too crazy anyway. It's just checking down to Ramondre. I mean, what do you, what can you, say? what else can you say? It, not, not pretty. Uh, Darius Slayton, I would say no. Giants offense is going to be an interesting watch this week against a really good uh, Philly D. But also, I think Philly's offense is going to stay on the field long enough to where it just takes away from what the Giants are doing. It might put the Giants in throwing, throwing, and throwing uh, p passing mode, really, trying to get into it. But I just don't see Darius Lane doing too much. Little concern if you have to start him because it's not ideal at all. Uh, going down, George Pickens and Deontay Johnson. So, I mean, I'd say both players are disappointing no matter how you put it because George Pickens is too talented to not be doing more and Deontay Johnson's too talented to be doing what he's doing now, if that makes sense. My reason being, he just timely plays, timely things, you know, catch the ball or making the right football decisions not every play has to be a monster play and it feels like Deontay Johnson just tries to do the most sometimes a phenomenal player um when he's focused and locked in against Baltimore uh probably gonna run the ball a lot time's not gonna be on their side I would say low end flex play for both of them unless you can get some kind of big touchdown play but I mean even then it's just that's not predictable so I'm gonna say low end flex play for both Nico Collins bench I ain't touching anyone against Dallas D uh, I said it last week with the Colts I mean the old Alex Pierce showed out but I mean let's be honest y'all y'all wasn't predicting that Paris Campbell didn't do anything I mean he had four catches 43 yards Michael Pittman did nothing uh, Jonathan Taylor I believe was extremely limited he had 75 rushing yards I don't I don't know if he had a touchdown or not um, regardless the Colts just just know uh, keep it going uh, did I say Michael Gallup Michael I'll just talk about it man Michael Gallup looking like he's getting more and more involved getting more comfortable in the offense I would honestly look for him to get a touchdown this week against the Texans uh, team that they'll probably take advantage of so I would think a pretty decent start just because I, I do think that this is a week where Michael Gallup gets another touchdown uh, Corey Davis I think they'll have to Buffalo by by the I mean Buffalo. I think Buffalo will have to lock in on Garrett Wilson. It'll create opportunities for Elijah Moore and uh, Corey Davis. So I think either Elijah Moore or Corey Davis will have really solid weeks. Now, which one is unpredictable because the Jets still are a bit unpredictable. Uh, but one of them will do something. Uh, which one will it be? Is <laughs> is anyone's pick? Uh, Donovan People Jones. I'd say a solid start. I said start him last week. He had a punt return for a touchdown. Three catches, 44 yards. So a pretty solid week for your flex play. Again, as Deshaun Watson um, gets the rest off, the, again, the team will be better in terms of a skill standpoint. I can't stress this enough because I don't want people to be offended by me talking about it and be like, oh my God, why would you say they're better with him on the team? It, strictly in terms of skill. I'm not talking about anything else. As a human being, he's trash. I, I I have to say that every time because, again, in today's culture and today's the way things work today, you got to say these kind of things or you're going to get canceled or something like that. So let me be very blunt and clear about my standpoint in this whole situation, in this whole timeline of events. Anyway, uh, Zay Jones, Bench. I'm not interested in starting J Zay Jones. I'm mean, Actually, you know what? You know what? Let me retract my statement. Think about um, Tennessee's elite running defense. Thinking about how they allow these short check down passes a lot more frequently. I would say Zay Jones is a low key sneaky flex play. And I know I came out the gates like slamming like nah, not nah, start Zay Jones. But then I thought about it and I'm like, yo, Tennessee, they give up pass yards. Not running, not rushing yards, passing yards. And the ball is going to get thrown down a lot to safety valves. 
because the heat's going to be coming to Trevor Lawrence. And play action plays will be pretty prevalent, I feel like. So with that being said, Zay Jones, six six catches this week. Mm-hmm. 12, 13 points PPR. I'm just saying, man. Sneaky flex play. Uh, DJ Chark, solid. I would say a solid start this week. I mean, with the way Lions have been looking, they just look a lot more competitive. Uh, DJ himself has looked better since coming back from the IR. First game was slow, been better ever since. Uh, so I would say a solid play. It's very, very startable at your flex. Tyler Boyd, uh, I don't see this game being too high scoring. Um, again, as Deshaun Watson gets his rest off, I think as long as Cincinnati takes a hold early, they can just kind of be smart and manage game clock as opposed to just trying to do too much. So Tyler Boyd, I think, is more prepared than anything I would avoid. Matt Collins, MVS, all these guys that you see, bro, like, just stop. Just stop. Okay, where's... Where the... Okay, this, he might be startable. Elijah Moore. Are the Colts on a bye this week? Yeah, the, the Colts are definitely on a bye this week because I didn't see Paris Campbell. Um, he's always my my low-key like, oh, he's pretty startable for, for his value. <laughs> but anyway, let's jump right into it. Our favorite three plays from 1 through 10, 11 through 20, and so on and so forth. Our favorite three plays this week is going to be... Oof. I mean... I mean... Dude, these top three is... Honestly, just receivers in general are just on crack, bro. Because, like, it, like just looking at the top, what, the top six are just cracked out going to be good this week. I mean, honestly, I would say my favorites, literally, my favorite three, you know what? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to say my favorite three is going to be Jay Jettas, Tyreek Hill, the Cheetah, and Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase, his second game being back, a lot more comfortable. Uh, getting that game rhythm, that's because his first game back, what, eight catches, 97 yards. I'd expect a touchdown this week, in all honesty. Tyree Kill against Chargers, a game where they're going to have to score to be able to comfortably run the ball. And Chargers are going to score, so they got to score a solid amount. We're looking at 28 plus, 28 plus points for the Dolphins. Tyreek Hill is going to be solid this week. And Justin Jefferson against Detroit, you just keep, they can't stop him. They, they are not going to stop Justin Jefferson. He's going to feast. Not that you needed to be told Justin Jefferson's going to feast because let's be honest, everyone's predicting that. But I'm predicting it too. <laughs> uh, 11 through 20. Same thing here. Jalen Waddle, uh, Garrett Wilson. I mean, I know that the Buffalo's going to do a better job at being on him, but I mean, volume alone and just what he's done, Garrett Wilson. And then, mm, we could probably go with Christian Kirk against Tennessee's passing defense. They're going to allow, I'm, I'm a little, no, you know what? No, no, no. Scratch that. I, I didn't even see this. Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, Jalen Watto, Garrett Wilson. Again, I want every piece of pie I can get from this Miami and Chargers game. Plus, Keenan Allen's obviously badass, so that, you know, that helps. Uh, 21 through 30, we are going to say, hold on, look, is this, I swear to God, this better be recording. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's recording. I, I said this already, but I've had plenty of blunders. I'm over it. Just want to make sure my stuff's recording, man. Uh, anyway, Joshua Palmer, uh, again, want a piece of that pie from that game. Um, <laughs> Jerry, Judy, and Mike Evans. That'll be the three I'll roll with um, for reasons that I've disclosed. Although Mike Evans, I didn't really get into too much other than I'm wanting him to score more. But with San Francisco, the pressure is going to be there. Expect a lot more one-on-one -on -one opportunities since they have Chris Godwin being um, the underneath guy, the guy kind of getting those crossing routes. I think San Francisco is going to do a great job at applying pressure because of that, they're going to assume the ball is going to Chris Godwin. It may or may not. It honestly probably will create one-on-one -on -one situations for Mike Evans. I would probably look to assume he could probably get a touchdown this week. Especially since Tom Brady loves himself Mike Evans. And once he does get a touchdown, it's like he feels, it feels like he's going to get two that day. So, Mike Evans. My reasoning may be stupid. It may be genius. We won't know until the day comes. So, just saying, man. <laughs> uh, 
Joshua Palmer I got into and Jerry Judy got into. Uh, 31 through 40, we're going to go with Michael Gallup. Not that he's going to explode, but I think he's going to provide a, a steady base for this week. And that's all you can offer from a 35-ranked receiver. Uh, DJ Chark. And... <laughs> and Zay Jones. All right, there you go. And 41 through 50, we're going to say... Or for, 41 and plus, let's be honest. 41 and plus, we're going to say... <laughs> we're gonna say Elijah Moore <laughs> there you have it because either him or Corey Davis is gonna have a good week considering that again Garrett Wilson is gonna do his thing but Jets are gonna need someone else to step up not named Garrett Wilson and it, it's it's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a tough matchup regardless I think the Jets offense is gonna have opportunities and they're gonna have to air it out um, Zonovan Knight might do his thing get around 80 rushing yards but someone else has to step up it'll be Corey Davis or Elijah Moore so yeah it'll be just that from 41 and plus because god I cannot with these names dude I can't I can't do it I'm not gonna cap anyway as always appreciate y'all for watching if you have any questions comment in the comment section below I've been doing this for forever now since week one uh what are we on week 14 week 14 now fantasy playoffs is among us how are you doing hopefully great hopefully i've led you down a, a better path not necessarily the best path but a better path and yeah man regular season is almost wrapped up it's crazy time has been a blur but enough of taking your time as always this has only been different oh we've been different and we out